Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to the YouTube channel. I am John Kurtz. Please click subscribe if you have not. Talk college football every day on this channel. Right now, that means conference realignment every day on this channel. Like and comment on the video, too, as well. I would really appreciate it. Today, we talk with Max Olson of The Athletic. He is as plugged in as anybody when it comes to Bob Bowlesby and the Big 12 Conference. Conference realignment in general, but specifically the Big 12. So I had a chance to ask him, KU in the Big 10, West Virginia in the ACC, the Texas schools in the Pac-12, should anybody feel like they have a good soft landing spot right now? Max has all the details, and here's that conversation. You also wrote about this week the fact that the, the Texas schools, Tech and then Baylor and TCU, have been working closely together, communicating daily. You know, I think for K-State fans, you read that and think, oh boy, okay, because your hope there was like, all right, Tech, Oklahoma State, K-State, maybe Houston, somebody out to the, the Pac-12 if there's going to be a life raft there for four teams. However unrealistic that may actually be, uh, but how realistic to you is Baylor and TCU actually winding up in the Pac-12 because we hear about some of the cultural concerns with adding small private religious schools there into the league? Yeah, that's that, and, and, and even among those three schools or those three in Oklahoma State, if, if they were to work together, it, it doesn't even mean that all of the leaders of those schools are all going to be in agreement on here's the move we need to make that we need to go you know, pursue a move to the Pac-12, for example, as opposed to sitting around and waiting for the fate of the Big 12. I, I think even that is going to be a little bit tricky to get that kind of cooperation. But um, I think clearly the betrayal by the University of Texas has, uh, has brought a lot of people together, um, and that's the case for the Texas schools here. I think their leaders and their ADs and, and presidents and chancellors know that, hey, we need to get on the same page and share information and um, talk about what's out there and, and what are there options for us to, to stick together in some way? Because I think they understand that, you know, right now there's not one conference saying, hey, we need to add TCU. That's the member we need or Texas Tech or Baylor. Like, I think they know there's more value in the three of them together or the four of them together, just as there's more value in the eight of them together. And so, um, you know, you're going to have different factions within that of, hey, do we need to be aggressive and, and pursue a move or, you know, is this just lining up, just for trying to explore whatever backup plans we have in case there are more defections? But I, I could see those schools, um, you know, continuing to work together and, and continue to see, hey, is, is there room in the Pac-12 for us to, to planning a flag in the state of Texas, uh, do something for the Pac-12, and, and, and is clear to stop, you know, bold enough to, uh, to take advantage of this opportunity? Well, there's obviously some real antsiness around here because, you know, you read things like that, TCU, Baylor, Tech, Oklahoma State, potentially to the Pac-12. There have been the Kansas, Big Ten rumors, West Virginia and ACC, and nothing really for K-State. Uh, is is K-State in the worst position, do you feel like, out of all eight that are left here? Oh, I, I wouldn't say that. And look, I, I don't mean to freak anybody out by talking about the other schools. I I just think that right now nobody has a great sense. I, my, my sense from, from everyone we've talked to is that the Big Ten is not rushing to do anything. And if we had a better sense of what the Big Ten's intentions were and, and if they felt like, you know, there was motivation to either respond to something the Pac-12 is doing or the SEC is doing, if, if, if they were rallying support in their, you know, in their conference to, to, to make something happen the way the Pac-12 is potentially right now, then I'm sure there would be more conversation about Kansas and Iowa State and Kansas State and and maybe the, the fit there and, and, you know, the value they could bring to that conference. But I just think things have been a little more active on, on you know, among those Southern schools in the Big 12 in terms of them uh, looking at what's out there. I, right now, my, my sense is the Big Ten's not looking to do something. And so, that yeah, that puts people in kind of an uncomfortable position here. But, again, you, you can't never say never on this stuff. I'm not going to say that whatever people are reporting about this stuff can't possibly ever come true because – like I said, you know, this is we're talking to several years here, and not just somebody rushing to make a decision in in 2021. Um, and and certainly, whatever feedback you're getting from your TV partners on what you can do to add value, you're going to listen to that too. So, uh, no, I don't think KSA is in the worst position, and and I don't think that necessarily there are members of the Big 12 that are just flat out going to get left behind. But um, I, I think that's just I, I'm sure Gene Taylor and and. You know, Jamie Pollard and Travis Goff are doing everything they can to figure out what's out there and to make the case for their school. But, uh, you know, there, it, 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 you're just going to have to trust that, hey, this stuff will, will work out in due time, but it's not going to happen soon. Max Olson from The Athletic with us. West Virginia to the ACC, does that seem to be, if there, if there were a most likely scenario for something to play out, would that be it? 
Yeah, you can't even really say that because, you know, I, I think we need to have a better sense of, um, you know, what's going on with the playoffs because I think that right now, certainly the, the move the ACC would want to make, I'm sure, is to add Notre Dame as a full-time member. But, you know, if, if the 12-team playoff is, is happening or, um, you know, if, if that model is still going to happen even if it's later, you know, a few years later than we expected, um, Notre Dame doesn't really have any incentive to do anything. I mean, as long as they're finishing like, in, like, the top 10, they're going to be in the playoffs. So uh, I think that, that that's kind of the, the question mark, I think, for the ACC. And so, because I, I don't think you would just add one member. Um, so there's not some, like, kind of clear signal here that West Virginia is getting from the ACC of, like, yep, we're, we're ready for you this time. Kind of, yep. So that's why West Virginia is playing along and saying, hey, you know, if you want to talk to the Pac-12, don't leave us out of it. Whatever we can do to stay in the Power 5 league and, and maintain some financial stability, then we're, we're all for it because – even for West Virginia, as much as we can all look at that and see a geographic fit and say, yeah, that's probably what I would do if I was running West Virginia, there's still just no guarantee that that, that offer is going to be on the table. What's next as far as the Big 12 and ESPN is concerned? Because, I mean, it was such a crazy bomb drop by Bob Bowlesby. Shoot, has that been a week and a half ago by now where he <laughs> sent the cease and yeah. desist and all the accusations that came out, and then it feels like things have, have really quieted down since then. Where do you see that going next? Yeah, you know, Bob Bullsby was asked about that last Monday uh, during his appearance in front of the uh, Texas Senate Committee, um, and he he said that that they've they've kind of at least publicly agreed to uh, you know to a little bit of a ceasefire there publicly, and, and that it would be counterproductive to to take more shots at ESPN. But I, I do think it's a good question because I do think the next question there is is you know did Bob Bullsby accuse them of, of tortious interference, and, and I'm sure there's a reason why he did that. That that's not like a, a small thing to throw around in an accusation. So, you know, does the Big 12 take legal action of some kind? Um, and, and you know, how does ESPN respond to that? I, I think that's still kind of still to be determined, or, or maybe it's in progress. I don't know. I, I haven't heard of that being imminent. But, uh, you know, when you make an accusation like that, I, clearly you're willing to go there. So uh, I, I do wonder, yeah, if, if we're not maybe necessarily done with that one, but uh, currently quiet on that front. Do you know, uh, this is maybe a question that's, I, I'll just ask it, what is the best case scenario for the Big 12 as far as that's concerned? Just a, a heaping sum of money out of that? I don't know, uh, for going, uh, going after ESPN? Yeah, going after I ESPN. I, I don't know, yeah, like that's, that's one thing when I talked to Bob Bolsby that day when he kind of went on the offensive there, um, you know, I asked him kind of what what's the desired outcome there of, of of going after ESPN, obviously, you know, being well aware that that's the, you know, you're biting the hand that feeds you there. And his, his bottom line was, uh, this is wrong. They crossed the line. They need to stop. They need to stop doing it. And so I, I don't know. I, I don't know how he sees uh, the partnership between the Big 12 and, and uh, ESPN beyond this TV deal or if he's putting all his eggs in the fox basket or what. I, I, I don't know. That's, that's what part of what made it seem so wild in the moment is like, Clearly, people don't go at ESPN like this because they know that they're going to have to negotiate with them in the future. Max, last thing for you, and I greatly appreciate the time. I, one of This is not the most important thing about all of this, but to me it's one of the most fascinating things. How in the world were Texas, Oklahoma, and the SEC, all these different parties, able to keep that under wraps for at least six months, however long it was going on, without a, a single leak coming out until Texas A&M got a hold of it? And will we someday get a Max Olson like just – post-mortem on all this, like the timeline, how exactly all of that happened behind closed doors for six months. Yeah, it's, it's a uh, – that I, I'm, I'm glad you bring that up because, you know, you talk to a lot of people around the Big 12, and, and their suspicion is that it's not just six months. But they've clearly been working on this for a year or so. And, you know, will, will they ever admit to how this all began and what the actual event was, you know, that made Texas interested in the SEC or reach out to the SEC? I don't know. I, I don't know if, if those people – I'm sure that the folks at Texas are, are dying to spill about how they pulled this off because that is especially a market where uh, everything leaks. You know, there, <laughs> there's just – there's there's a lot of uh, dogged reporters there that you would think would have got wind of this and busted it open, and, uh, and, and yet they pulled it off all the way until the Houston Chronicle report came out. So I don't know how they pulled it off, and because of, you know – probably the, the very complicated process here of, of whatever like divorce negotiations they're going to try and get into here. 
I, I think they're not probably going to tell all about how this actually happened until, you know, the day they actually leave the conference or maybe even after that, it's still incriminating. I don't know, but yeah, it, it, we, we would, we would love to have that story of how this actually happened. And I'm sure over time we'll be able to piece that together. But uh, right now they, these guys are uh, trying to keep it close to the vest because they know anything they admit about this will be, you know, used against them in the process of, uh, of trying to separate from the big 12. That came, guys, by the way, from my radio show. If you search the game, KMAN, on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, wherever it is that you do get your podcasts, you can find that and listen to me for two hours every single day. Who wouldn't want that? You can also follow me on Twitter, at JL Kurtz, if you want more, J-L-K-U-R-T-Z. Appreciate all you guys stopping by. Take care, and I'll talk to you soon.